by transcription. The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. The non-alcoholic hair tonic that contains lanolin. Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men and women and children, too. Sam Spade, Detective Agency. It's me, I'm sweetheart. very sorry, but Mr. Spade is not available at this hour of the morning. Effie, you might have sir. better luck if you try in an hour or so, say somewhere around 10.30 or 11. Effie! You see, his work keeps him up nights, and he has to have... It. Miss Perrine, this is your employer. Take a deep breath. Mm. Got it? Mm. Now let's start all over again. This is Samuel Spade up and kicking at 9.30 in the morning. Already? Still. Sam, this is absolutely unprecedented. Hmm? You haven't been up this early since 1934. I had to see you, sweetheart. Really, Sam? I couldn't stay away another moment from those roguish green eyes, that windblown hair. Oh, Sam. Your gay, musical laugh, that cute little upturned nose. Sam, are you giving me a line? I'm about to, sweetheart. A fishing line. A fishing line? Mm-hmm. Where were you with a fishing line? In a closet, of course. Oh. Tie on a couple of sinkers and a brand new hook. I'll be right down to dictate my report on the Cuddy Hunk caper. Gotta keep myself away, son. Dashiell Hammett, America's leading detective fiction writer and creator of Sam Spade, the hard-boiled private eye, and William Spear, radio's outstanding producer-director of mystery and crime drama, join their talents to make your hair stand on end with the adventures of Sam Spade. Presented by the makers of Wild Root Cream Oil for the hair. Say, has your family tried Wild Root Cream Oil hair tonic yet? That's right, I said your family. For not only men, but women and children, too, like the neat, natural way Wild Root Cream Oil grooms their hair. The effective way it relieves annoying dryness, the fast, thorough way it removes loose, ugly dandruff. If your family hasn't tried it yet, get Wild Root Cream Oil in the 25-cent Get Acquainted bottle. Find out why it's America's favorite. Ask for Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Again and again, the choice of men and women and children, too. And now, with Howard Duff starring as Spade, Wild Root brings to the air the greatest private detective of them all in the adventures of Sam Spade. I'm looking over the police. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, Sam, what's the matter with you? Calm yourself, Angel. Nobody looks good this time of the morning. Just got my hair mussed. Oh, but all. look at your... your I know, clothes. I know, but don't jump to conclusions. I haven't got two heads. The little one is only a bump on the big one. <laughs> Shall we have at it? You look nice in the morning, Sam. That's a big, dirty lie. Now, what is that bright yellow stuff all over the floor there? Oh, that sunshine. Oh. Uh, date, fill it in to uh, Mr. Terrence Burgess, City Jail, San Francisco, California. Jail? Mm-hmm. From Samuel Spade, license number 137596. Subject, the Cuddy Hunk Caber. It seems like only last night that I was strolling up O'Farrell Street through the fog. As a matter of fact, it was last night. A night off, I thought. I would sidle up to Dreamland Auditorium and watch two other people break each other's bones for a change. The card looked interesting. A 300-pound ox known to the public as Nasty Norbert was wrestling a new import named the Swedish Pinhead. Extra, night final, convicted killer escapes from city jail. Extra, bludgeon killer loose. Extra, paper mister? Not I, son. I am not interested in crime. But wait. How many papers have you left, fella? About 54. Well, you better get going. Somehow the news of the bludgeon killer's escape touched only the outer fringe of my consciousness since I was determined to leave it all behind for a night. So I strolled toward Dreamland, noting the while that about a half a block behind me, a character in a hat and a long gray overcoat seemed to have the same thing in mind. When you've been failed as often as I have, Terry boy, you develop hindsight. This was obviously an amateur shadow. I'd stop, look in the store window, so would he. I turned off O'Farrell onto Webster, ditto. Then off Webster onto Geary and over onto Fillmore. My shadow was moving closer now, keeping me inside in the crowd. When a police car screamed past, my guy ducked into a store entrance like a rabbit. 
I turned up Post Street, slid into a dark doorway, and waited. Hold it, buddy. No, no, wait. Let go of me. Just a minute. Here, give me that. You. Okay. Now, what's the matter? Nothing. Honest, I... Why are you tailing me? I... I'm in trouble. You're getting a lot more trouble running around with a police 38 in your overcoat pocket. Where'd you get it? I borrowed it. Who from? A cop. Wait a minute. Raise your hat. Yeah. All right, I'm Terry Burgess. Terry Burgess? Didn't they convict you? Yeah. They were going to sentence me tomorrow. The bludgeon killer, huh? How did you spring? The cop turned his back and I grabbed, that's all. I had to get out, Spade. I had to... Wait a minute now, wait a minute. I had nothing to do with it, so help me, but nobody cares, nobody listens to me. I'm going to the gas chamber for something I didn't do. You got a lawyer, haven't you? Oh, he can't do anything. He tried to, Well, what can I do? I don't know, Mr. Spade, I don't know. I saw you back there. I thought if anybody could help me, you could. I'll take it easy. I followed you trying to get up nerve, but... Can't you please do something? You hear that? Those are power cars, kid. I know that's bad news to you, and it'll be bad news for me if I'm caught talking to you instead of dragging you into headquarters. Yeah, but... I'll tell you what. I'll listen to what you can tell me in five minutes. I'll risk my license just that long. On page one of the Beginner's Handbook for Correspondent School Detectives, it states that it is not okay for a private investigator to conceal a known criminal, much less a convicted murderer. But I couldn't help wondering why this flyweight bludgeon killer would seek out for a confidant, a detective. Especially one whose unfaltering sense of duty and sickening high moral standards have made his name anathema to the underworld and have caused him to be blackballed at gangster canasta parties everywhere. Anyway, I listened to the kid's story. He started right in about Lori Hanover. Got me. She was beautiful, of course, but I've known a lot like that. Lori Hanover, huh? Uh, what was she? A photographer's model or something, wasn't it? Yeah. Kind of a screwball, according to the papers. Oh, they didn't know the half of it. She'd been giving me the brush for weeks. Well, I thought it was another guy. I tried to talk to her, but she just hung up on me. Then what? I couldn't stand it any longer. One night I got tanked up and went over to her place for a showdown. I found her lying on the bed with her head all. It was awful. I. How'd you get in? The door was open. Yeah? Then what? I. I guess I passed out. When I woke up, a cop was standing over me. That's all there was to it. That's enough. What time did you get there? I don't know. How did you get there? I took a taxi. What kind of a taxi? Where's the driver? I don't even remember that. It was some off-brand of a taxi. Some off-brand of a taxi. This is important, kid. I know it is. I try to remember, but I can't. It's I try to remember. Oh, but, uh, yeah, a nightmare. Uh, what time did you leave your apartment? I don't know. Sometime after dinner. You don't know when you left, how you got there, or what time you found it. I'm telling you the truth, believe me. Your five minutes are up. Come on, let's go. But listen, I can lie to you. I can make it for a lot of times and stuff, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Hey! Wait a minute. That's a police car. Sure it is. Let go of me. I... Take it easy, Burgess. You dirty double grudge. Okay, Burgess, okay. <laughs> There. Come on, Burgess. Come on. Get up. Burgess? Where? Yeah, let's take him down to headquarters. I should have known better, Spade. Shut up and get in. Well, well, Burgess. <laughs> Boys will be glad to see you back. He's got a great story, officer. He doesn't remember anything that happened the night of the murder, and he's stuck with it. Sure, they're all alike. He's guilty of sin. That's where you're wrong. He's innocent. Huh? But then why are you... Because I'd hate to have a client knocked off by a trigger-happy cop. You'll be safer in jail. <laughs> to headquarters, officer, and please don't let's use the siren, huh? What a night. Put him away, Lieutenant? Yeah. He's in his cell now, talking to Chenoa. Chenoa? You mean the lawyer? Yeah. Well, he comes pretty high. Where's uh, Burgess get the money to hire him? Uh, he's assigned with the court. Chenoa sort of half volunteered, anyway. Hey, you mind if I make a suggestion, Sam? It's your office, Kelsey. Go home and go to bed. You're wasting your time. I don't think so. I got an ache in my bad knee. The case is off the books, Sam. Off your books, onto mine. I think the kid was framed. Framed? Holy cow. He gets drunk, makes a lot of threats against the girl in a public bar, takes off for her apartment, the landlady hears a scuffle, calls us, and when we get there, he's out cold on the floor, not six feet from her body. What more could you ask? One small question. Uh, Who killed her? 
Uh, guys who knock off their girlfriends generally have a few answers, Andy Lieutenant. Burgess has none. So he's stupid. So he was drunk and doesn't remember. Look, Kelsey, old gray-headed friend, I've saved you a lot of trouble tonight. Now, why don't you be a love and get me the transcript of the trial, huh? It's out of my department. You're well thought of around here, Lieutenant. I'll bet you could get it if you tried. Oh, Sam, for Pete's sake. And the case file, too, while you're at it, huh? Good evening, gentlemen. I presume this is Mr. Spade. That's right. This is Mr. Chenoa, Sam. How are you? How do you do, Sam? I'll leave you two to hold hands while I rattle up those files. Treat him gently tonight, Mr. Chenoa. He has an ache in his bad knee. Bad knee? Uh, some people get hunches in their head. I get them in my knee. I wish you were right. How's the kid? Oh, better. You've given him something to hold on to. It's going to be tough when the letdown comes. It's a little early to be digging his grave, don't you think? And it's a little late to be riding up like a knight in shining armor and telling him you're going to get him off the hook. I don't mind telling your spade that I resent your intrusion, implying as it does that... that, uh... That, that, uh, uh, that uh, what? Uh? Well, that I haven't discharged my duties as counsel as efficiently as I might have. I want you to know that I volunteered my services on this case because I thought a charge of first-degree murder against this boy was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So you try to get him off on manslaughter? Uh, temporary insanity. Why not manslaughter? Because ten people heard him swear he was going to kill Lori Hanover in a bar one hour before the crime, that's why. Okay, so you pitch for temporary insanity and the court psychiatrist pins you to the mat. And all the while, you were leaving out the solidest bed of all. Oh? Yeah. That he didn't kill her. That he was innocent. A fall guy for somebody who had a much better reason than he did. And another thing, Chenoweth, if you defended the kid half as well as you're defending yourself right now, he wouldn't be in the can. Good night. Why do I talk so big when I know so little? After spending a couple of hours with the files Kelsey brought me, I began to wish I hadn't stopped in that doorway on Post Street. I'd have had a much more pleasant time with Nasty Norbert and the Swedish Pinhead. Kelsey and Chenoweth were right. The case against Terry Burgess was tighter than a Pullman window. So I went home and I went to bed. My bad, e uh, bad knee was aching worse than ever when the phone rang. Hello. Hello. Mr. Spade? Yeah. I'm awfully sorry to bother you at this hour, but as Shakespeare said, delays have dangerous ends. Yeah, he also said tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Any one of the three will suit me, friend, but right now then I'm... Then you rather procrastinate? No, hibernate. I'm in my bare feet and the floor's cold. Very well, then. I only saw you with young Burgess in an alleyway tonight, and I thought you might be interested in what I have to say. Hold it. I get my slippers. I, I won't keep you long. As you know, Mr. Spade, the case against Mr. Burgess was particularly strong since the defense was unable to produce any other suspect with sufficient motive. Right. There's an excellent reason for that. They whose guilt within their bosom lies imagine every eye beholds their blame. Burgess? Shakespeare. I have made a decision, Mr. Spade. Two hours of quiet meditation have convinced me it is time to reveal to you that young Burgess is, in fact, innocent. Who are you? If you will call at my office... Room 210 in the Cabrillo building. I shall supply you with good and sufficient proof. Hello? Hello? It took two minutes to throw clothes on over my pajamas and run down to the street. And as my taxi cab took off, I noticed that the ache in my bad knee was gone. The makers of Wild Root Cream Oil are presenting the weekly Sunday adventure of Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, Sam Spade. 